uh, let's get started. In fact, let's get started with uh, somewhat rock this. Uh, Theta, your character and your name and everything else that goes with it. Would you yep. please? I'm Gore. Gar, I'm Sam Gar. Sorry. <laughs> My brain, my brain ain't here today. Uh, I am a wizard of the fifth level. My background is hermit. I am a turtle. Uh, my personality traits is there's nothing I like more than a good mystery. My ideal is self-improvement. The goal of a life of study is the betterment of oneself. My bond is that I sold my soul for knowledge. I hope to get do great deeds and win it back. And my flaw is unlocking an ancient mystery is worth the price of a civilization. Uh, next up we have uh, Griff. Griffin. All right. Hey, everybody. I am uh, Griffin. I am playing Baron Kicks the Shield, the Battlemaster fighter who is a dragonborn. He's cool and calculating. He believes heroes stand up against all challenges. Those under my command and responsibility come first. And he has an immense ego and illusions of grandeur, which doesn't help now that he's a Baron. <laughs> Do you still have illusions of grandeur? Proven delusions of grandeur. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, ba uh, Baron is just the lowest rung of the noble tier, so he could go away for emperor if he can manage it. It's always clearly deserving. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Pandaren. Hi, I'm playing Barakat, the eloquence bard who is a concealed tiefling. I think flattery is the best way to direct attention away from me. I like seeing the smiles on people's faces when I perform. My instrument is my most treasured possession, and I'm struggling with that secret identity. Stop, it's Justin. All right, I am Justin, and I am playing Hugh. I am a kobold ranger slash druid who does not believe much in thinking. He does believe in equality, uh, specifically for treatment under the law and people being protected. And he is going to be the greatest kobold that ever lived. He is now one step closer because he learned that he knows how to dance. And last but certainly not least, we have Robert. And I am playing uh, Braith, uh, also known as Braith the Butcher, a cleric for the God of Cord. Um, he is honest to a fault and resolute. He strives for truth and uh, to provide hope in this cruel world. Uh, faith guides his conscience, even when in doubt, and he's known as the Butcher to many, a name he wears with distinction. And he's somewhat prejudiced to his enemies. Although lately, that's kind of been calling into question. Okay. Uh, let's start with you, because I know that you don't remember this. But uh, you did have a sort of a date. A friend of yours from the army, who's now a member of City Watch, invited okay. you to dinner with his oh. wife. Okay. Uh, I, I do not remember this at all, but okay. You know. So that's the image of Nihilus of the City Watch see it all right and uh he's he lives in the uh artisan's quarter and uh, so i believe it's in the uh let's see which quarter it is i have to reference yeah it's in the lower lower rung right here it says an a for artisan and it's basically in the middle of the quarter um a relatively modest house uh right by the wall okay and uh and that's the old of the the wall of the old city. Well, actually, that's <laughs> the wall of the middle city. The old city wall is this one. So as the city has continued to grow, of course, it's going to go southward, and even has, you know, areas around it. You can see an expansion here, right here. So there's the city will continue to grow over time, and there's farmland and land. By the way, um, certain spider friend is somewhere around here um, in the farmlands. So, so you know where where they are at. So it's evening, and and you go there. Oh. Yeah, I uh, okay then. I I guess I'm assuming uh, Nihilus gave me his uh, address. Yeah. All right, I figure out where it is. Uh, I knock on the door and I say hello. Right. Door opens up and you see a a, a matron. Actually, she's rather young. She's probably no more than twenty winters. Uh, she's like, oh. All right, you must be uh, Nihilus' friend. Come on in. And you can smell like a, the, the smell of stew uh, wafting uh, out of the house. It's a, not a shack necessarily. It's a nice little home, clean. Uh, one, uh, they apparently, uh, 
they live in a two story uh in the, in the lower story of a two story home i don't know who lives upstairs very modest basically yeah uh you also realize that she as she sort of turns around and you see her profile uh that she's pregnant oh, okay uh and it's like oh and she gotta tr tries to push back so you can pass it's like oh i'm sorry no, no, it, it, madam, it is quite all right. Uh, please, I, I thank you for your hospitality. Oh, uh, you usually eat for three. I guess we're eating for four tonight. Oh, uh, I, I, I apologize. I did not mean to impose at all, but Nihilus insisted. That he I, had better half. I mean, a friend of his is welcome always in my home, uh, such as it is, uh, my lord. Um, so out, of I, out of curiosity, have I met her before or no? No. Okay, just check. Uh, see, see, I mean, he is a bit older. He probably is closer to 30 years. Uh, so he probably some, he, he met her when he came to the city. Yeah. After his service in the army, so. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm like over 50, so I have no... Yeah. Um, like, the cat, well, Braith is over 50, so he has no leg to stand on in terms of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's been a while. And uh, about half an hour later, he shows up and... Uh, in fact, by the time he shows up, it's a, a downpour uh, has, has basically covered the entire city. And he's sort of covering his head, and it's like, ah, it's, oh, dear. Uh, oh, you're here. So, uh, so, yes, yeah, I apologize. Uh, I came early, uh, Master Nihilus. Oh, uh, so it's just Nihilus, please. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer in the... I'm just a city watchman. Um, so everything ready? I, I take it. Um, I'll go up. To, I'll go back. And you know, he basically goes back and basically changes like code and stuff like that. So it's you know soaked. Yes, and, your, your wife has been very hospitable, and I oh, appreciate yeah. the uh, kindness that you bring in upon us. And, and he has a small bag, and this bag has like vegetables, uh, fresh vegetables, and some fruit, like some apples and stuff like that. Uh, got the apples early this year. Uh, I don't know uh, where the end. Uh, it, are, is all the apples and everything, do they look like nice and fresh? Relatively fresh. I mean, it's a big city, so you get what you can, right? But uh, they're, they're relatively fresh. Well, uh, if I, I actually asked Nihilus, if I may, may I uh, perform a quick ritual on the food? Uh, of course. And he basically puts a, a bowl and he actually, oh, she's finishing with the cooking. He actually helps to set up the, in the mantelpiece and a, a, a wooden bowl to put the freed up food on. It's like, Go ahead. You know. He yeah. doesn't know what you're exactly what you're gonna do, but you know, I'm just gonna do a quick purify of everything to make sure it's all at like at its best. Yeah. Uh, you know, nothing crazy. Um, and I just start doing prayers and everything. You know, my prayer to Cord, um, and prayers to the gods to bless. You know, like the standard sort of like now we like bless ourselves before we eat type of thing. I guess. Yeah. You know, th blessed is the food that we are about to receive. Thank you, Catholicism. Amen. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Holy Cathol, for this food too. we are about to eat. Yes. And uh, I just do that as a um, a gesture of good faith to, I guess, I'm assuming, I'm assuming Nyla is a uh, former soldier of mine or something. Yeah, he was under your command. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember last week. I vaguely remember, like, I vaguely remember like training Barricat for something, and that's about it. Yeah, with a rapier. I think yeah. we, um, sorry, I think we joked that this guy was also there at your campaign where you lost most of your people. Like, I made a joke about it, and you're like, oh, yeah, it could have been. Uh, you know what? We'll call that canon. He's part of, um, is that you're talking about the story that I told you guys a while ago about like where we yeah, lost the one where Gar, Gar was actually there. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, the uh, the what was it, the canyon thing, where yes, you decided to improvise and a lot of people get died. Yes. Um. Yeah, we'll say that. Sure. Why not? Well, I mean, that was my version of the story. It's your different story no. told from different angles. No, no, no. I, I actually like that. It, it ties in that little thread too. Why not? He's a survivor of that. That's fine. So they sit uh, to dinner. He uh, he actually helps her to sit down. Right? You say that she's probably her last trimester. Um, you've been a cleric. Sometimes clerics do to the, help to deliver babies and the like. Uh, that's not, Would it, not. This is a dumb question, but is it rude to ask how long until like the birth comes or no? They wouldn't know exactly. 
-hmm. you know, they sure. would know by, you know, it's not like, oh, it's not like today. It was like, oh, this is the date we're going to give you because, you know, and they're constantly checking the weight and have sonar, you know, ultrasounds and stuff like that. So, no, they wouldn't know exactly. They might know the, down to a week, maybe, as most. Okay. Yeah, but that's, you know, doesn't. I, I'm just checking, like how how um, how many doctors are actually in this city? I guess would be the question I would go. I mean, with. you could always ask, "Hey, how many months have you been pregnant?" <laughs> I don't want to be rude, though. Well, you just assume she's fat, then. I'm not assuming anything. I, I'm assuming he told me his wife's pregnant. I mean, she literally told you that they were eating usually eating for three. Yeah, and now that you're coming in, you know, kind of a bit of a joke. So yes, she basically, you know, basically told you that she was pregnant, right? Um. We'll go with that. Um, and so, and, and the way he behaves around her carefully and all that. And, you know, of course, of course. Um, and, uh, you know, they sit down to dinner. And, and he basically, he at some point asks you, well, she does ask you, it's like, well, what brings you to, to the great city? So, well, uh, I actually, it was really just sort of uh, happenstance reporting. Um, Events that have been uh, taking um, place on the borderlands near Narwell. Mm. Yeah, yeah, about I'm assuming like a X amount of time uh, outside from where Greyhawk is. About uh, two weeks, yeah. About two weeks away from th this location, and it's uh, it's been interesting over the past couple of months. I've been back in the field, uh, working as a member of a group called the Headhunters. Sort of a hired, um, I guess, hired um, uh, hired force for uh, Narwell itself. Yeah, it has been Brilliant. an interesting experience. I must admit, my uh, companions. Uh, let me let me just say that I've had to adapt myself to what my companions uh, are used to doing. Oh. I and, and he jumps and like, well, I suspect that the adventurous lives are not really as regimented as the army, sir. That's uh, no, the way it is. No, no sir, yeah. they are not. But it is all right. Um, I, still, I still maintain my own uh, form of uh, discipline now and then. Not no, to either. worry. It's not the same thing marching in columns and going against main armed forces, you know, a horde of orcs, something like that, and then going to some cave or something to take some old trash of some dead person. Uh, unfortunately, we've uh, we've actually had a few encounters with uh, several uh, orc and goblin and bugbears and practically a lot of their um, forces. Fortunately, we've also been able to take care of some of it. And our business in the city, I believe, will be concluded soon, though uh, some members of my party are looking to possibly take uh, participate in. Um, in I think, like some gladiatorial games coming up. Oh, the games, yeah. Um, that's uh, and you see, he far, uh, you know, he frowns a little bit. It's like, um, you know, the games, not a fan, I take it. Well, I mean, things get a bit rowdy when the games are out, you know, yeah, a lot of drinking, a lot of people come from the outside. It's basically around uh, midsummer anyway, so that means that you know, people come in for their celebrations of, of you know, mostly paler and stay for the bloodshed and the drinking and the rowdiness and the, you know all of the things and we were running ragged usually those days oh, busy and, um, oh busy during that time i see yeah um you can do a perception because he seems to be distracted sure. that's it 18 yeah, there's something else he's not, you know, he's he's sort of dancing around whatever he actually wants to say. Like he's sort of looking for words and you know, being a common man, he doesn't have a lot of word choice. You know? I will act, I will actually then say to Nihilus, um is there anything that you actually need help with, perhaps? Well, I mean no, no, I I don't need any help. It's just that uh, there be some rumors and such such as it is around uh and he looks over to to his wife, and she's like, no, don't, don't do anything. Don't ruin it. You know, don't ruin the dinner. Uh, I, I, I apologize for uh, prying. I'm just, what rumors? Oh, no, 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 no. It's just, I mean, it's just rumors, really. But it's, uh, 
the Lord Rakian, he's um, getting on his ears, and there's some, uh, some rumors about... Well, there was this girl that came last year, um, and she claimed that her sister had disappeared, and uh, and that uh, Lord Rakian had to do with that, and uh, the captain of the guard, of course, uh, investigated and the like. Uh, we've been we've been uh, we didn't call it a raid, but we did uh, go into his mansion and everything. We didn't find nothing, there, of course. But the rumor still swells that uh, you know he tends to uh, spend his time with young ladies, and then the ladies sort of well, well, it's a new young lady, you say, and that's about it. Uh, I mean, I... women come and go. It's a big city, but you know. Um, am I aware of who this Lord Rackian is? Have we met him or no at the party? Uh, you can roll an intelligence check. Okay. Do you remember anything? This is more so Rob the player not remembering if we did or not. But... Yeah, but it's also be you were pretty busy as a character, so yeah, don't worry. Fair, fair enough. There were drinks at this party. Well, there were so there were so many nobles and late la gents and ladies and different people, and you were usually talking to the, to the captain general of the of the uh, of, uh, of Greyhawk's forces, you know, you served under. Okay. Uh, that, you know, if, if this Rakian fellow was there, you didn't notice. He didn't talk to you, you didn't talk to him, so it doesn't, doesn't ring a bell. I will say to him, like, is there a worry that this Lord Rakian is doing something unsavory to you, uh, Nihilus? Oh, I mean, I don't, I'm not. It's mostly all, all, over my pay grade, I suppose, you know. But such a man with such so much wealth, where, where all the money goes to. I mean, the money, the gold, the silver just flows over those games. And he, uh, I don't know. It's something about when I saw him. I've seen fellows like that before. You know, the kind that gets worn down and broken and damage and so, lost yeah uh can i do an insight now on nihilus if that's okay yeah uh 17 yeah he seems worried Let's see. Uh, but uh you know I, he's still I'm, being he's still I'm, being evasive as well right is there any way we could uh is there a way to like pinpoint where the worry is coming from is he worried about rakian doing something is he worried about um like just the fact that these games are coming up and he's involved. I, uh, I mean, you have to ask questions. You know, you got to probe deeper into. You know, I, I was deeper. trying to do it without asking questions because I don't want to pry and be very rude. Um, yeah, no, your insight will not give you a mind reading ability. <laughs> That's not. I mean, there's spells for that. Uh, I thought I'd try. Um, I would. I would. Well, I will ask this. Um, I assume you're going to be very busy then when the games do commence. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of rich people come from the Amsterdam. I'm all over the place. Um, usually, always have clashes with folks from divers. Uh, they just come in and think that they can. Uh, their stair city is better and all that. So yes, so, uh, you know that you do know that divers is a city to the to the west, and it's a rival trading uh, city. It's the city is actually on the shores of the near dive, which to put in the map, you know, this is this river is called the Selenten. And it's it connects the near dive, which is to the north. Uh, let me put it uh, so I don't keep moving the map. So the near dive is this way. Woolly Bay, which is the sea, is this way. Yeah. And this this river, coast on the west, connects both of them. Like I explained before, when most of the river quarter is also the um, the main port area, so most of the ships that can this. Basically, the near dive is based on the, the on Lake Michigan. It's a very large lake, and it's also known as the Lake of Un, uh, Unknown Depths. And several nations uh, have short are along the shores of the near dive, so there's a lot of trade there. And so people who also want to trade south, uh, they can do it over land and also do it through the Selenton. That's one of the reasons why Greyhawk is not only a very rich city, but maintains its, its position. Uh, divers is a sort of rival city state to the west, and there have been some even some clashes in the past, nothing serious really, but there's been some tension. And so, when you know these games attract uh, 
uh, Greyhawk is known for territorial uh, games. Divers has a similar situation. Well, almost they do a thing with their rivals and they 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 ape each other. So it's like when the people in Divers come in, they go like, "Oh, by the way, you know, our city is better because we have a hippodrome, right? We don't have this crude fighting animals and killing people. No, no, we have a we show our you know our people ride horses and and chariots and it's you know it's the, the it, best it, team that's better. You know, so they yeah, have this it, thing where you know think. Byzantium and Rome, right? The sort of would be would be rivalry. They were still going on the same time, right? Rome yeah. had territorial games. Yeah. Byzantium had the high hippodrome. So yeah. I, I was gonna say, like that sounds very uh, B- Byzantine and Rome, like three hundred CE level there of yeah. like bitter rivals, even though they're all kind of the same type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can understand why um, Nihilus would be um, stressed by that. Um, I would actually ask him, um, uh, I would ask him personally, are you concerned? Uh, I'm always that, concerned, yeah. About it's also, life. it's also, uh, well, oh, she'll be fine. We don't get a lot of problems out here, mostly in the middle of the city, you know, uh, around the, sta- at the stadium. It's also the uh, religious, and he sort of, you know, shuts his mouth like, uh, folk who come in because it's midsummer and, uh, you know, midsummer is where many of the, at least the days of good almost always have court has you know some religious importance around midsummer, right? It's, oh, of it's, course. I, I'm uh, well but aware the, of this. the big deity there is Palor, which is the deity of the sun, right? So that's their holiest day of the year. But um, a lot of a lot of pilgrims come in into the into the area of the temple. Well, the temples are all over the place, but there's so many. So. Uh, that's another thing that divers has a uh, has one area where it has all the temples. That's a, the the avenue of the gods, right? Versus Greyhawk, which has temples all over the place. Which means you have the combination of the games. You have the com- in fact the games originally were, you know, as a celebration of Midsummer, so it has some religious uh, aspect to it. So they have the games. You have people. The, the, you know, you have it, it's the markets are bu- bu- buzzing, right? It's it's the busiest day of the of the year or the busiest week really the week yeah. before and after right so it sort of ramps up they have the games at the height and then it sort of ramps out as people sort of while back home you know usually peasants are the ones who stay the least because they have the money but rich people make it a holiday for say a month or more right um a lot, also a lot of money come in because a lot of uh not only people spend money but also they uh, actually make donations to the churches which then get taxed by the city yeah yeah so so I mean, between the, I mean, this is think of it as all, as the equivalent of Greyhawks Christmas, right? Black Friday for over a week or more. Yeah, it's gonna Black it's, Friday. It's gonna be rough. I get it. Yeah, and he being a guard, he has to deal with drunkards and and all kinds of things. So yeah, I will say I say to Nellis then, um, if or Nellis then. Um, I, I hope then that the season will not be too uh, rowdy this time around. And I hope that you w- will find uh, comfort and solace within your own home from the uh, insanity that is coming up. Uh, um, Chances are I will likely still be in the city. If you do need any help, do not hesitate to ask, my friend. Oh, I, I wouldn't. Uh, and he looks over his wife and is like, Oh, go ahead. Just, just, just tell them. Like, well, to be honest, uh, you said that you had uh, some knowledge of this Narwhal place, right? That's to the south, right? Yes, yeah. Um, it is it, a, a small town, but yes. Is it, uh, is it quiet then down there? Relatively, yes. Um, save for um, several uh, instances where we had to deal with some bandits and ruffians, of course. Awesome. Oh, that's ruffians or a thing we deal with it every day. I, I, the wife and I would be saving some some monies, not much really, but with a baby coming up, am I looking for a place to live? I mean, Greyhawk really has all the amenities if you have the gold. But to be honest, she she likes she's always been a country girl. She likes it out outdoors and the like. So you know, maybe now we can... uh, a thought has occurred to me. Would you like to meet uh, a member of my party, a uh, member of the Headhunters, a man by the name of uh, Kix? 
friend of yours is a friend of mine, sir. I perhaps uh, he may be able to help you. Uh, see, uh, Master Kix has uh, recently been granted a title of Baron. Oh, uh, and he starts, you know, like, oh, uh, uh, I mean, I, I don't, uh, I mean, to say that, uh, I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to uh, impose or anything. I mean, You're... I'm pretty busy. I just, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I and she, and she, and, and she I, puts her hand on him. It's like yeah. I smile uh, warmly and I say, "It's not imposing at all. If you are interested, we are looking for able hands that might be able to uh, accompany us back to uh, this place. It will be difficult work, I must admit. Well, but there to is be a honest, place I, for I, you if you're interested. I was looking more to you know to change pace, you know." Do the whole swords into plowshares kind of thing, as I heard it say by the by the priest of Rao, right? You know, I mean, my my fighting days are are close to an end. Hopefully, I mean, I survive a lot, sir. You know that. We all do, unfortunately. It's lucky no. that you get to. It, it honestly is a good thing that you're able to relax and not worry about fighting any further. Well, you know, I just have to club a couple of fools once in a while. That's uh, yeah. I have to go to the, and he sort of puts it, like, he puts it, like, I have to go to a priest to um, help me regrow the tooth. That, that took quite a bit of my, you know, the apothecary thing. Oh. Oh, dear. Took a while. It was painful. You know, cost me quite a bit of silver. I, <laughs> that does not sound pretty at all, Nihilus. I'm just glad that you are uh, relatively in one piece still. No, oh, it's just a, you know, lucky head on the face. Yeah, you know? I was, I was, it was outside the brothel, and you know how the people get rowdy. You know. Well, you know? as I said, the offer stands. Uh, worst comes to worst, I would, if you are interested in perhaps traveling to Norwell, uh, when we do leave the city, perhaps I can uh, bring you along with us. If you're, if you are both willing to do so and come, and she says, she says, yes, yes, I'm sure that you know uh, if you're leaving soon, that'll be better. I don't think I'm going to be able to travel uh, soon enough. I, I don't uh, want to have a baby on the road. That would be uh, a bit embarrassing, I guess. I will, I will actually confer with uh, the rest of uh, my compatriots about this. Uh, see what they say. See what our plans are, but. Whatever occurs, uh, y my offer will my offer obviously remain standing for any for either of you and your child. I mean, okay, setting aside, you would have you or someone in your party would have to intercede and get him to be able to get the transfer. Yeah, not well, right? So okay, yeah. I actually I mean, was he, about to ask that. Can we just bring him with us, or do we have to actually get a? No, he he would be deserting his post if he just leaves. <laughs> All right. Well, I would assume he would tell me that. Then I will say I will yeah. speak on your behalf about uh, your post and everything. Oh, I mean, but you mentioned a baron, so he's like, "Oh, sure, baron, nobles, nobles can deal with that, right?" It's like you know, and in fact, that's what she says. It's like, "Don't worry, dear. The, this, the baron will take care of it as as they do." And he and he gives us a look like, like, "Oh yeah, right. That's how the world works." Sure, you know, but he doesn't say anything. Uh, um. And oh, so the, di the dinner continues. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm just saying this is a lot more plot than I thought. Um, uh, then I, I, I assume we just have the dinner. And is there if I give them like a blessing for their child and everything like that before? Oh, I sure. I mean, I mean, they wouldn't ask because that would be imposing, but they certainly would not say no. Right. Especially from the God of strength. Yep. Yeah, I just do a small uh, prayer to cord. Let this baby be born healthy. Uh, let him be it. Or let them be a uh, strong child, one that is able to uh, strive for all the values and virtues that they uh, ascribe for. And uh, I, after the evening, I thank both uh, Nihilus and his wife. I never got her name. I assume she has one. Lydia. Lydia. I thank Nihilus and Lydia, and um, I say I'll try and uh, be in. I'll be in contact with you as soon as I can. Oh, he says, so you can, we have a place you can stay. You don't have to walk on the night, at night out here. You just stay in the morning. You can leave. No worries. We have a place for you. 
I don't uh, wish to impose any further on your husband. No, 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 no. On the contrary, I will. Uh, she, Lydia, would be very offended, and she looks at him like, <laughs> and when she smiles, is like, uh, if you were to just wander off into the night after, and that's not we, we don't do that to our guests. Uh, no, sir. I, I sigh and I say, very well. Um, I will stay if you, if it's okay with you. I will stay in um, your den. So that you may have privacy for yourselves. Yeah, I mean, it's the city is like a couch, you know, thing they have offer you. I and, didn't know uh, if they would have a couch in this time period, yeah. but okay. Uh, or the equivalent of like a cot, basically. But it's it's you know that she makes sure that has quite a bit of blankets and whatnot. So that you. I mean, I got a bedroll. I'm fine to be yeah, fair. But but she she actually kind of makes sure that you're as comfortable as possible. I think possible for them, which is not a lot, of course. But, I, I I do appreciate it and. Yeah. Uh, do my prayers, go to sleep on the floor in this cot or whatever. And it's all one. Basically, one, there's only a door for their bedroom, and it's and not even a door, it's like a curtain, basically. Yeah. So. Fair enough. And then, you know, they, they go to bed. Uh, you know, I think she's the one who gets up and goes to basically to the, to the outhouse a couple of times during the night, you know. Uh, and, and she tries to be as quiet as possible, but you kind of notice because you're, you know, you're something I, as old I, as I. Yeah, I don't, I don't care, yeah. though. I'm, I'm uh, I am uh, being quiet and as a mouse. And, and come the morning, they have breakfast for you, and, you know, and, and, uh, and he says, well, I'll uh, walk you out to report for duty anyway, early in the morning. That's very, go, sir. That's very kind of you, Nihilus. Thank you. So, and again, thank you and your wife for your hospitality. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. guess we are out in the morning. I'd have. N I'm wondering if like the rest of the party is wondering where the hell I am. Was I like shanked in the streets or something? I don't know. Well, the thing is that the way you describe it, everybody's staying in their own places. So you know, I didn't you... know that. I don't know what's going on. To be fair, yeah. so. I don't know. Gar probably is the only one who's staying in a, in a inn somewhere. Actually, the uh, sleeping the the sleeping giant was the inn that I said. Uh, so Griffin is there. But uh, everyone else I'm, has their own places, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm sleeping in a stable. Yeah. I'm sleeping in a stable with Webford. It's okay. a great time. Yeah. You have money. Money can be exchanged <laughs> for goods and services. <laughs> but I, but I have what I need. Do they have hammocks? No, but Webford does. Okay. Yeah, good so, point. I can see it. So in the morning, um, are you planning to leave and then come back closer to the time of the game? So you're planning to start preparing for the games right now? What well, what's, I, what you are? Because it's I, about a, it's about a month, you know, uh, midsummer starts in about a month or so. So there's a couple of weeks uh, before it starts. Well, I mean, if uh, if we go back, I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to talk to Kick specifically about um, the discussion I had with um, uh, Nihilus. Ah, uh, yes. And I will say to him, um I would say to I would say to Kix, uh morning master Kix, I uh, see you are up early. Of course, of course. Got a nice good breakfast and a great day ahead. Yes, uh may I speak to you for a moment? Well, of course. It's not like I'm doing anything else other than eating breakfast. Uh, I as you probably know, I was um <laughs> At a lovely evening last night, mm -hmm. former uh, member of my own command. Ah, catching up with everyone then. Yeah, well, I guess you do finally have the time for it. It was also serendipitous. I didn't realize he was <clears throat> actually in the city. But um, I, we were speaking last night, and they are looking for a change of pace. And uh, I, if I must admit, it's probably a little hasty of me, but in my in our discussion, I did mention that you are now a baron, mm -hmm. and that perhaps maybe having them to accompany us to your barony uh, for a simpler life might be um, in order. I don't know about simpler. It might actually be more complicated, but, well, uh, I guess it's good for us to be proactive. I, I never would say that I'm not a good warrior, but I'm definitely no general or anything. And we might have a lot of people we need to manage. 
well, if anyone uh, has the experience around here, it would be you. And if you happen to know someone who could fill the shoes too, all the better. Well, that is one way of looking at it. But uh, his wife is um, pregnant, mm -hmm. and uh, a child is definitely due soon. Uh, at the very least, perhaps we could maybe escort them to Narwhal for the time being. But to do so, I would actually need your assistance. Oh, well, in what way? They're a member of the City Watch, and we would uh, need to negotiate their release. Ah, contracts. That's something I have slightly more experience with. And then you just see the PTSD in his eyes of dealing with Gar. <laughs> <laughs> Is Gar there, by the way, or is it just kicks? I don't know. Depends. Gar, are you there? Or are you, have you woken up yet, or are you still in your shell? Where are we? Uh, I think that you're in the sleeping uh, sleeping giant inn, unless you're staying somewhere else. No, no, no. I mean, where are we? Where is the scene? <laughs> That's what I meant. Sleeping in the giant inn in the common yeah. room. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, then I have my head buried in a warm bowl of water. Right. Fair enough. Well, I guess if there's any two of us here who could handle it, Gar, and I'll just, like, uh, call over to Gar, would you be willing to accompany me and deal with some contract negotiations? What is in it for me? Well, I won't have to sign you as a general once all the others are dead. That would probably benefit me more. I'll be honest, I don't think it would be great. I disagree. I mean, why Why do you think it wouldn't be good? Well, because I'm pretty sure you have no military experience. In what way? What about me well, tells you that I have... Troops. Right. What could it be? Could it be the slow demeanor, the... The librarian tendencies. Ah, geez, are you saying it's that my hard to put are down. you saying that my considerative approach to many problems is a poor reaction to generaling? No, not at all. Rather, I'm saying I I doubt that's your specialty, but I do feel that your specialty is definitely arguing in negotiation. Oh, I hate to break it to and you, if but anyone who can argue. Writing a contract is not hardly arguing with a piece of paper. Well, still, the invitation's open. Braith. Yes, Master Gar. To what benefit does this end me? It would be only a benefit of doing a good thing for a uh, good person. God, neither of you are good at negotiating, are you? I never said I was. I'm just good at discussing things. This Master is why Gar. I'm asking for your help. Um, so I'll get up on the table and be like, I think I may have a, ha have the answer to, to how this is going to help you. And you hear a voice, a deep voice from, from behind the oh. bar. Oh, feet off the table. Sorry. The, the, the ogre that is, you know. The... And I jumped down. Yeah. Okay. So thank, thank you. You're welcome. He's my friend. I call him Big. I think most people call him Big. It's true. <laughs> I, I thought that's, that's what his name was. I think if we need to get a whole bunch of people to make this whole barony thing work, and this gets us a people, or more than one people, then it serves you getting, getting your big books and being, being the, the big librarian. Sorry, I've sighed without the mic going off because it was that was poorly negotiated as well, but at least he's trying. I recognize he's trying and that nobody else is really doing any good effort here. Uh... Either way, that's my take. Um, also, once that's decided, I had something that I, I was thinking about doing to help us out. What is that? So we need people, and I want to find people who are crazy enough to try and, you know, follow in my path. Uh, what do you mean, Master Hugh, to be following as uh, members of the Green Faith? No. 
to ride giant spiders. Now, do you consider your spider to be a giant spider? It is. So you mean medium-sized spiders? Yes. So you want small people. You want to you want to recruit a lot of small people. Yeah. But I was going to start by looking at like hospitals for crazy people or prisons, children or like little villages, not children though. Why not children? They're small. Oh, I could include orphanages. Oh. I think you'll find orphanages I, tend to be filled I with children. I will recommend I will recommend against sending orphans into battle if you would. <laughs> Also, hospitals. Look, it'll but, be the second worst thing that happened to them. <laughs> but orphans uh, yes, have I nothing to lose. <laughs> but or- orphans have nothing to lose. They I don't, don't have their parents. I feel <laughs> like I've never felt closer to Hugh than till just now. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Either way. There's a glimmer of hope in this kobold. Because you said children will be bad. I won't go after the young children. I'll go after the ones that are close to being sent to the streets. I perhaps suggest that when you're in the middle of a bar surrounded by people, you don't say things like, I'm going to go after the children. (laughs) People might not hear it the right way. (laughs) So, as the Baron, are you cool if I do this? Uh, We could get some people who have actual training, though. I would actually say to Matt, like, is it not possible to ask maybe members of your own uh, kobold um, tribe to participate in this? Kobolds are fucked. Have you seen us? Yes, but uh, it does not mean there's not hope. You might not remember from the previous night where he refused to represent his own people. No one no. was there for that. So, okay, so... Let, we all were. Remember, me, it was a big old vote. Let me paint a picture for you. The, uh, just before the party, when I was coming back at night, a kobold pulled me aside, and he tried to force me into a sewer to work. Uh, what? Yeah, I mean, kobold should have free access to labor. So, I may, if I'm, I'm open to kobolds, but I'm not going to actively look for kobolds. I hope so, because your chances of breeding are zilch if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Still, I guess more to the point, uh, yeah, enlisting the tribe is probably to the, our best benefit, and if we're still in town or you have time, maybe you could put your focuses on speaking more to Lady Nibblehand. You seem to be getting along well with her. Oh, that was just a thank you. Right, She's not I mean, interested in me. She just wanted to have fun at the party and cause a ruckus. She's already visiting. If she wants more, she'll do She'll do something then. Right, but in my history of knowing a few mischievous people, maybe you two will get along well and do more mischief. If you, if you approve of me doing more mischief, then I will. Uh, this not, Surely not this is much. about to backfire. Immediate kicks us <laughs> like, yeah, wow, this is going to totally backfire. <laughs> maybe tone it down. You know what? I will. I will do something around that. Okay. A Q five weeks later, ah. Greyhawk on fire. <laughs> so, Braith, I guess you and I are going to go ahead and deal with the contract for right now. And what about uh, what about you, Baccarat? They're all cats. Barracat. I I don't he'll, need the name from you. One day. He's not a clever <laughs> casino game. <laughs> B-Man Among the many is... things he's not He's not that His either His first name is not Bert He'll he'll get it one day Mr. Right. Bees yeah. Maybe that'll help Well How much experience do you have in playing politics kicks? Well Given last night, I would say anywhere between two to three hours. Right. Oh dear. As I'm... you can tell, we're in a bit of a predicament. <laughs> Normally, I would probably just leave at this point. But you seem like you really need help. 
So hmm. if you wish, I can um, advise you and maybe negotiate some contracts without a cost to you directly. Right. We have already have a few people who are interested in doing an exchange, so we at least have their support. If you could find any more or secure additional uh, funds, anything also, at all. Uh, I've got a good memory of who and what we've got currently. Excellent. Uh, then I trust that to you. All right. Well, and... I'll be around if you need my help. I. What about you, Gar? What are you going to do? How long? Question out of kicker. How long has it been since this whole operation began? I know that we like did a few things that took a few days or something like that. I mean, it's like the fourth day or so that you're in the in. in I mean, it's it's about two days since you met this group. You've probably been here for a month or so, so you know. If you're running about stuff that's already happened in the city for you personally, you have about 30 days of back, back, background story to work with. Yeah, then I'm here. And how long is it till the arena? Uh, about two... Uh, no, actually about a, a month or so. All right. Well, as it... For, uh, as so it that, that, will give, that will give you plenty of time to go down and come back up again. Well, I figure that could have happened in a 30 days backstory. Like, maybe I came here for some research, and I'm also here for the arena anyway. Yeah. But yeah, no, when it comes to uh, Kix's story... Kix's question. Yeah. Although, this is one thing, now that you have been here longer, uh, make an intelligence check for me. Please. Where is the right window? There it is. Intelligence. Not a specific skill? Nope. Because there's no politics skill. The closest you have is history. It doesn't really fit. Uh, this is more like social graces and the like. Um, and customs of the city, which is an ability that you have as a background, I suppose. But I don't think anybody has that. At least not for Greyhawk. Uh, nope, none of us are nobles. Yeah. Uh, you do know that it isn't so easy as to just walk in into the um, into the game to start, you know, beating up on people or getting beat up on. You need a sponsor. Well, yeah, need... like I said, what I was going to get to in a response to Kicks was that I need to find a source of money. I need deep pockets on my side. Oh, that reminds me. Does mm -hmm. as a like I know I'm good, but does is that does everybody else have a sponsor for the uh, for the fights? I believe that's what I'm trying to find. Right. I don't think I have one in particular right now. I could always speak to Ironheart. He seems to have a good interest in what we're doing. I I got a I have a really old blind guy. He hasn't uh, felt your face yet, has he? Oh no, he has. Okay, what did he call you? That's right. He was fine with it. He he's uh he's he's in charge of the shrine to Alona. Oh, never mind then. That makes for the, sense for the for the title. So he said yeah, and then he spot he he said I, I was sponsored for the fight. Wait, wait, wait. He reached that... down and felt your face. Well, no, he was sitting there, and I sat beside him. Okay, so he knew exactly how tall you were. Yeah, and he knew he exactly knew... how thick your musculature was. Yep. And you talk crazy to him like you do to everybody. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, of course you don't. <laughs> um, I'm I'm gonna run and 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 start and start reaching out and, and trying to get get some stuff done. Um, can I get a letter that says I'm not just a crazy kobold asking to take people who are in bad positions? Uh, sure. I'll go ahead and write a letter of introduction. I mean, how many uh, people can read anyway, right? You would need something that you don't. I I don't think you have. You have to buy this. Actually, you have to commission it, and that would be a signet ring. I thought you could say ah, a writ yeah. of sanity. Oh, so there God. we go. We're gonna go ahead and do the signet ring this week too. Yep. yep. Uh, in that case, Gar, yeah. since you seem to know a few people around town, maybe uh, once uh, uh, brain slowly. Dying on names. Once uh, he was well, done with his business, looks like I'm barren now. 
Yeah. Uh, once you once Hugh's done with their business, maybe you two could go together and try to see if you could find uh, more sponsors for everyone. Um, well, it seems to me suggest- that a sponsor should be a personal matter. How did, how much do these? Well, well, well here's the here thing. Here's the thing. Um, if you're gonna, if you, I mean, the thing is that uh, the competition has singles, but also essentially you need a team. So I assume that right. the so you need a single sponsor for everybody. Uh, I call Murdoch. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> or face, got, or face. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Uh, yeah, In that case, okay. we're covered. No, okay. uh, what what the old man basically told you is that you could represent the church in the fighting, oh. but he's not he's not someone who can actually arrange for. Got it, got it, got it. Right, right. The idea so is that he to actually narrow down who will sponsor us and then actually make petitions. Oh, see, so yeah, I was looking yeah. for somebody for an individual sponsor. This is gonna. Um, would the Shire Reeve be able to sponsor us or no? He doesn't live in the city. That probably doesn't have the kind of connection. Yeah, to his name him. alone. He lives oh. in a Shire. All right, hold so on. I guess it has to be in the city. I okay. think I know. I think I know this. I think I know who to check about the sponsor. My friend, who likes to dance. Oh, there you go. It's one option. They live uh, in the city. We can yes. also ask the captain general, who probably has some decent pull. Then, in that case, I suppose we have a lot of things to do today. So, my other question is, do we know how much signet rings cost? Uh, anywhere between 25 to 50 gold pieces. Okay. So, I mean, Depend- is that the, just the signet ring itself, or is that also the meaning behind the signet ring that has to get processed? Yeah, you have to do the paperwork, and you have to select the coat of arms. Okay. Oh, you get to select and- a coat of arms? I mean, Sweet. you have people. You have to basically tell someone, "Hey, I want this coat of arms." And if two it's phoenixes then, fighting a bear midair coat of arms. There's the there's a heraldry to that, literally heraldry, which you have to find a herald. You have to find a lawyer who can get you to a herald. To you know. Okay, I'm willing because, to pay for the signet ring. God, I want to be that lawyer just so he gets like a dove taking a shit on somebody on himself. Only herald. if you can set me up. To get my own signet ring that's mine. Okay. You're, you're not a noble, are yeah. you? Squint, no. are you? But maybe I'll become one. You chose I not have, to be. Because I know so know someone named Harold. I think that's the way it was said. What? Yeah, but is his name Harold Re? That's the the, the Harold Re thing. So yeah, if no, I no, no. That, his, his then I can is, become a noble. His first name is Harold, but is his last name Re? I don't know. But if it's but not, maybe you're it fucked, is. isn't aren't you? Either way, I want my own. I, I want my own like coat of arms with like me like biting the space of a me 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 and like a spider in there. It'll Hugh, really wait, cool. Hugh. Just before we get into this, do you actually want a coat made of arms? Nah, nah. I don't want one of those. That sounds creepy. But you recognize that heraldry has to do with a guy named Harold. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure you don't want a coat made of arms. Uh, man. Uh, I, I go to Master Kicks. Um, oh, any, of yes. the, any of the individuals that you spoke to at the party, would they be possible sponsors? And do you trust any of them? Uh, I'll turn to lessons for that answer. Are those people acceptable sponsors? Uh, they have... A lot of the people are nobles, and they either might sponsor you, or they might find someone to sponsor you. Because okay. part of the sponsor, they would have to pay for entry fees and all that on your behalf, mm-hmm. um, and which can run quite a bit. And then they get a percentage of the the winnings. What about that you cool guy with the black armor? <laughs> so, a sponsor doesn't necessarily have to be a noble, or well, it could be. Uh, it could be a church. It could be someone of importance, right? Uh, someone who's actually willing to pay the money. And do a, a sign a contract, and you know negotiate for a percentage of the winnings. That's the whole point, as well as you know, mm-hmm. fame and glory, sharing in your fame and glory as the person who it, uh, brought you actually, to the games. Do we yeah. actually know how much it is um, for the payment? Uh, do you haven't talked to anybody? And I think he said it any. was something like two thousand. No, that's the that's the title. That's the uh, top price. Top price was that? Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I would like. The payment is less than two thousand. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it has to be. It has to be. Remember, because you're hoping to use that money to fix up the keep. Anyway, my intent is to spend the day searching for a suitable patron that would be willing to. I hate to use this word. Patronize me. <laughs> uh, he would fall under that same boat where he would try and chat with uh, Lady Weiris Nibblehand. One, to establish which way they can have some fun around town can cause chaos that doesn't do too much damage. But first, we're looking for some for a sponsor for this. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be really fun if they saw Kobold win the whole thing. Okay. And of course, we know what uh, Braith and Kicks are going to do. They're going to do negotiations. And then uh, Barricat is going to do their thing as well. And uh, Bra- and Braith and, Kick- and Kicks is also going to go through the process of the uh, ring. Oh, yeah, yeah, and the ring, and the ring. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah we have an itinerary, everybody. And um, I, he was willing to pay for your ring if you will try to get him one that is his own, mm-hmm. not yours. Found this at the bottom of a Cracker Jacks box. <laughs> Barrel, right. I guess. It might Barrel. be difficult to like get you nobility off the bat here, but I will get you the ring regardless. Perfect. I <laughs> that's all he was asking for. <laughs> he doesn't know what nobility technically is. All right. And I guess while Braith is away, I'll go ahead and BRB at the same time and someone else can take the first lead. Okay. Uh let's start with you, Justin. Uh you okay. you meet up with um she basically basically dropped you like a, a place where you can meet her up and you continue to have contact with. Uh, and actually, she gives you a, a, a pass as a safe conduct to the, you know, to let me see what quarter you have to go, which is heavily guarded. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, to the to the high quarter. Actually, to, she lives in the gardens quarter. Uh, so you have to get past the garden gate, and that's what you need the safe pass for. Because that's the uh, more expensive area of the old city. If you get there, the the guards kind of give you a, a look, but you still go there. Her manor house is very interesting because it's literally one level, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's surrounded by very beautiful gardens, right? But the garden center is almost like wildflowers. In fact, the first thing you hear is uh, a buzzing of bees and the like as you come in. Uh, and so it starts in, it, it's, it's Stands in stark contrast with a little more manicured lawns and areas that uh, other rich people have here. Uh, you're there. Uh, also, another thing is that the guards outside are halflings. Uh, and they're wearing mail. Sword, mail, and shield. Like, what? Uh, and you are? My name is Hugh. I am here to see Lady Nibblehand. Right. Do you have any documentation of your visit, sir? Absolutely. Present documentation. He reads it. He looks at the other guard, who is a, a female halfling. They kind of look at each other. They roll their eyes. It's like, one moment, sir. And he goes in, fetches someone, uh, 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 basically uh, a servant. And, like, and she looks at you and looks at the guard and looks at you again. It's like, and like, Right this way, sir. Thank you so much. Um, and you led to a sort of a gazebo, actually, in the back. Um, and she's having tea. And she's having tea, and there's other... There's actually, like, half a dozen halflings. All of them noble. Uh, some of the kids are running around. Others are just having tea or, or chatting. But the moment you come in, everybody stops. They look at you. And before somebody raises an alarm, she's like, oh, right this way, right this way. 